Hi, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry to be late. Not a problem. I'm CJ Craig. Of course you are. I'm Dr. John Fallow. This is Dr. Cynthia Sales and uh, Professor Donald Huke. Huke? Huke. Okay, and you are the Organization of Cartographers for Social Equality. Well, we're, uh, we're from the OCSE. We have many members. How many? 4,300 dues paying members. What are the dues? Uh, $20 a year for the newsletter. Let's start. Wait. Wait, I want to see this. This is Josh Lyman. Indeed you are. Josh, this is Dr. Fallow and Hi. his merry men. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Should we begin? Yes. Plain and simple, uh, we'd like President Bartlett to aggressively support legislation that would make it mandatory for every public school in America to teach geography using the Peters projection map instead of the traditional Mercator. Give me 200 bucks and it's done. Really? No. Why are we changing maps? Uh, because, CJ, the Mercator projection has fostered European imperialist attitudes for centuries and created an ethnic bias against the Third World. Really? The German cartographer, Mercator, originally designed this map in 1569 as a navigational tool for European sailors. The map enlarges areas at the poles to create straight lines of constant bearing or geographic direction. So it makes it easier to cross an ocean. But. Yes. It distorts the relative size of nations and continents. Are you saying the map is wrong? Oh dear, yes. Uh, look at Greenland. Okay. Now look at Africa. Okay. The two land masses appear to be roughly the same size. Yes. Would it blow your mind if I told you that Africa is in reality 14 times larger? Yes. Here we have Europe drawn considerably larger than South America when it's 6.9 million square miles, South America is almost double the size of Europe's 3.8 million. Alaska appears three times as large as Mexico when Mexico is larger by 0.1 million square miles. Germany appears in the middle of the map when it's in the northernmost quarter of the Earth. Wait, wait, relative size is one thing, but you're telling me that Germany isn't where we think it is? Nothing is where you think it is. Where is it? I'm glad you asked. The Peters projection. It has fidelity of axis. Fidelity of position. East-west lines are parallel and intersect north-south axes at right angles. What the hell is that? It's where you've been living this whole time. Should we continue? Uh-huh. Jerusalem would be on a map today in Namibia that comes from the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, as you can see right here, right at the southeastern tip of Namibia. Now, again, when you actually look at this on the terrain, and even if you look at it on Google Maps, you'll see and notice that it's pretty much all desert there and that there is absolutely nothing there. Another interesting thing to note is how this region, South Africa itself, is the name of it. How every other nation in Africa has a distinct name, but this one is named South Africa. Very interesting and suspicious indeed. Works hidden in plain sight for you to see the truth that's right in front of you. And of course, we also went over this source, which is right here, the Dictionary of Southern African Place Names from the Human Sciences Research Council, or the HSRC, that was done. And this was a source that was compiled back in the 1980s. And you'll see right here that Canaland, because what we just read and we just saw that Canaland, what, is known as Canaan's Land, according to this source. It's also encountered with the K, Canaland, as you just saw so they're even telling you right here where the real land of Canaan is that the real land of Canaan is in southern Africa so we have this as a witness we also have the 1411 map as a witness two or more witnesses to establish this matter not only that but we know that southern Africa is what barren desolate with the Kalahari desert containing the real scriptural Jerusalem so we have all these witnesses to show us and to confirm where the real land of Canaan is. It's important to understand where the real land of Canaan is because that's going to help us in our search for the real Jordan River. Alright, so I want y'all to notice how in the movie Black Panther how it took place in South Africa and how like the landscape of Black Panther and it took place with a black kingdom arising in the future, you know. Not only that, but they got a movie coming out to coming to America too. The first coming to America was obviously obviously about us as being African Americans coming to America as being royalty and slavery, sold into slavery, forgetting who we were. 
we were really royalty, and we we really are still royalty, you know, as being Israel. So they actually know the truth. Hollywood know the truth, and these people that make these movies, they actually know the truth. Because Coming to America 2 actually comes out this Friday, and they actually know that the kingdom is coming upon Israel. And the times of the new millennial age and Jerusalem, actually, the real Jerusalem coming back into power, which would be us, is coming. So... All 400 years in captivity is about to end. It's been in America. It's about to end. And that's what they actually telling us through these movies. As you can see, they shot they shot Black Panther here in Atlanta. So a lot of this stuff took place right here in Atlanta. And a lot of this stuff they actually know. So they put this truth into the movies that they make. to start an exploration of animals than the remarkable tree of life at Disney's Animal Kingdom. This 14-story wonder is carved with images of more than 300 different animals and celebrates in a monumental style the circle of life theme that defines the Lion King. And each of these animals is a story in itself. In fact, everything at Disney's Animal Kingdom has to do with animals real, extinct, and even imaginary. <laughs> so let's use this as a starting point to take a closer look at the characters of the Lion King and see the real creatures that inspired them.
A king's time as ruler rises and falls like the sun. One day, Simba, the sun will set on my time here and will rise with you as the new king. He's the future king. Yeah, so you have to do what I tell you. To be a king, you need a kingdom, of course. And in Africa, a lion's kingdom consists of grassy plains and open woodlands called savannas. I'm gonna be the maid of it, like no king was before. Just like Simba and his family, lions live in groups called prides. And there can be as many as 35 lions in one pride. Each pride has a leader, like Mufasa. This ruler patrols the pride's territory and chases off any unwanted visitors. I just can't wait to be king. How? By a show of brute strength and an awesome roar that can be heard for five miles. <laughs> that was it? <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> So, what's a typical meal for a grown-up lion? How about 15 pounds of meat? I'm so hungry I could eat a whole zebra. Yes, it takes plenty of prey to feed every lion in a pride. But, like Simba's mother, Sarabi, and Simba's pal, Nala, it's the female lions that bring home the bacon. And when the work is done, lions can be found, well, lying around. Some lions spend up to 20 hours a day resting and taking cat naps. Now, even though each pride has a leader, the ruling male can sometimes feel threatened by a younger male in the group. Run away and never return. It's a constant battle to stay on top, so the ruler often drives young lions out of the pride. But, like Simba returning to Pride Rock to fight Scar, young lions sometimes return when fully grown to try and take over. Growing up for a young male lion also includes growing a mane. They're the only big cats that have them. Mom, you're messing up my mane. A thick, bushy mane makes a male lion look big and strong. Just one more reason the lion is called the King of Beasts. If you're a fan of Timon, then you already know that Timon is a meerkat. But did you know that meerkats are not cats at all? Whoa, whoa, time out. Let me get this straight. They belong to the weasel or mongoose family. And even though Timon hangs out with Pumba most of the time, real meerkats stick with their own kind in groups of five to 30 members. You know her, she knows you. These groups are called mobs or gangs, but there's no ties to the mafia, <laughs> to anyone's knowledge. <laughs> Ew, what's that? A grub. What's it look like? Like Timon, insects are one of the meerkat's favorite foods. Mmm. Tastes like chicken. But they also snack on lizards and small animals. These are rare delicacies. Mmm. Mm. Um, pecans with a very pleasant crunch. They dig for their dinner among roots and under stones. This is the great life. No rules, no responsibilities. Ooh, the little cream filled kind. These fast moving critters live in underground burrows on the African plains that they dig themselves. They use their long black claws as digging tools. In fact, these little guys can dig their own body weight in dirt in just a few seconds. The dark markings around the meerkat's eyes act as built-in sunglasses, shading their eyes from the bright African sun. And their ear openings close to keep out dirt and dust, since, as you can see, there's constant digging going on around him. The meerkat uses his long tail to help him stand upright. And he is one of only a few animals that can stand up like humans can. 
a meerkat spends most of his time eating, sunbathing, grooming, and sleeping. Hmm, does that sound like someone we know? Oh, wow! If you're hungry for a hunk of fat and juicy meat, eat my buddy Pumba here because he has a treat. Coming down a dine, on a Stacy swine, all you have to do is get in line. Ah, you ache it? Yup, yup, yup. Oh, some bacon? Yup, yup, yup. He's a big pig? Yup, yup. You can be a big pig, too. When he was a young warthog. When I was a young warthog. Warthogs are wild pigs who get their name from the wart-like bumps on their faces. Their eyes sit high on their heads to help them see into the distance where a hungry predator might be waiting. She's gonna eat me! Run, Poopa, move it! Slimy yet satisfying. Just like Pumba, warthogs love to eat grubs, but their main diet is wet grass. Kid, what's eating you? Nothing. He's at the top of the food chain. <laughs> the food chain! Warthogs mow through the grass like power lawnmowers, snipping plants with their sharp front teeth. I'm stuck! And to make their whole dining experience a little easier, warthogs kneel down on their padded front legs to get closer to their food. A warthog's snout acts like a built-in shovel, making them extremely good diggers. But rather than build their own underground homes, warthogs usually move into an aardvark's burrow once he's abandoned it. Like most pigs, warthogs love a good mud bath. Oh yeah, it washes away parasites and helps them stay cool when the weather heats up. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Warthogs usually live in groups called sounders, but adult males prefer to go it alone, like Bumba. What's wrong with that? Unfortunately for warthogs, they're a favorite food of lions. Oh. But even the king and queen of beasts fear the warthog's sharp, pointy tusks. Just like Bumba when he battled the hyenas, warthogs can be fierce fighters. <laughs> Who's the pig? Are you talking to me? Uh oh, they call him the pig. Are you talking to me? I shouldn't have done that. Are you talking to me? Now they're in for it. Hey, call me Mr. Pig! Matana, 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 Matana. These plump animals are surprisingly light on their feet, and they bounce along happily with their tails straight up in the air, just like someone we all know and love. Hyenas. I hate hyenas. Hyenas look somewhat like dogs, but they would make lousy pets. For one thing, their powerful jaws can chew up just about anything, including large bones. Hey, <laughs> do we order this dinner to go? Ugh, imagine what they do to your house slippers. We'd love you to stick around for dinner. Hyenas are so ferocious, they even attack each other. <laughs> Will you knock it off? Well, he started it. Hyenas come in two types, spotted and striped. Even you can't be caught unawares. Oh! The spotted hyena is larger and has reddish fur with a sloping back. Striped hyenas are gray with black stripes and pointed ears. And man, are they ugly. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll probably only see them at night, since they're nocturnal. Boo! <laughs> Just like lions, hyenas hunt in packs, and the females do the majority of the work. Despite their appearance, hyenas are fast runners, reaching speeds up to 40 miles per hour. Very few animals can outrun the hyena.
You told me they're nothing but slobbering, mangy, stupid vultures. Oops day on the oopets day. Who you call an oopets day? They are therefore excellent hunters. So good, in fact, the lions, who hang out nearby, often want to muscle in on their meals. <sighs> a hyena's howl sounds a lot like laughter. <laughs> but believe me, the appearance of a hyena is no laughing matter. Not the birdie boiler! <laughs> hey, why don't you pick on somebody your own size? Like you? Oops. <laughs> Yes, our teeth and ambitions are red. Be prepared. Yeah. 